Welcome back to another week of the Six Figure Roadmap. I'm here with Steve Larson. You guys probably know him, founder of Offermind, the funnel guy, the guy who's always talking about how to make profit from your funnels, from your offers, and who recently left ClickFunnels to start his own thing, still helps them, and is ready to rock and give you guys some awesome information today. So Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. This, uh, this will be cool and uh, love, love the theme of the show too here. This is awesome. Sweet, man. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Do you remember the first time you made your first six figures? Yeah, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I do actually. It was, it was probably three months into me leaving my job and I realized we had crossed a hundred thousand dollars and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and then I was like, what's cooler than that? I was like, how can we structure it? And this is probably something that people want to hear. I, the, the only difference between six figures together and then six figures in a day. And then last month had the first million dollar day, which is crazy. But like, understand that the only difference between those is uh, leverage and campaigns. And so <clears throat> it, like, there was no difference in the product. I, there was no difference in what I was selling um, the, or in the sales message. You know, I like, um, um, I don't know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum is a beast, right? And uh, way back in the day, he had, there's this crazy campaign he did um, around this fake mermaid. There was a mermaid that was supposedly caught off the coast of Fiji. And, uh, you know, the eight, you know, 1800s, they bring this mermaid to him in New York and He's like, oh my gosh, I want to promote this thing. It might help my museum. We all think P.T. Barnum is like this circus guy. He wasn't until like his later end of his life. He had this museum. So he's like, this mermaid, I help my museum. So what he did is he went and he grabbed, um, he started having these fake letters to a doctor get leaked to the press. And it was some other guy that was in on it with him. And it was this fake noise that he created around this mermaid. And uh, then he had the doctor go over and uh, travel over to Philadelphia from New York and uh, uh, go and check into a hotel and, and, and say, hey, thank you so much for letting me stay here. In, in the thanks for letting me stay here, I just want to show you this cool thing we just found and showed him the mermaid. The guy was friends with tons of editors. And so, so all of a sudden, all these editors all over the hotel, and they knew that. <clears throat> While that's going on, P.T. Barnum in New York was dropping, he dropped 10,000 leaflets um, of pictures of mermaids uh, and saying, hey, the Fiji mermaid's going to be here in my museum on this specific date and time. Anyway, they, they did some ridiculous things. That's the whole point I'm trying to say is like what they went through to create a campaign back then totally different than what we do now. Most people think a campaign is something on Facebook, right? So I'm going to put a Facebook campaign together. That's not really a campaign. Facebook and YouTube are killing the term. And funny enough, like the only difference between like the, like the huge spike days that I've had, or even just even the consistent style of sales, there's two different styles of campaigns. There's, there's campaigns that are good for launching and there's campaigns that are really good for evergreen. And what I do um, is when I want to get paid sustainably or increase that level, I just look in my evergreen campaigns hat and run another one of those. When I want, I'm like, all right, let's go try and orchestrate a million dollar day there's nothing more to it than just pulling together some of those launch campaigns and creating noise around that. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, it was a long answer, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's super interesting. So you, so leverage and campaigns, do you create the like million dollar a day process and the evergreen process at the same time? And then you just launch them both or is it like one after the other? What, what's your process behind that? It's a great question, man. No one's ever asked that. <laughs> uh, you know, um, the way I do it actually is I like to think of it like this, you know, I'm super against funding. Um, and I don't, I don't believe in getting a loan. I think 99% of businesses don't need it. Um, if I've got a guy ask me if I want to invest in something. I was like, no, I'm like principally against it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, what I, the thing that I do though is, you know, I kind of like when I left my job, the first three months there, what I was focusing on is what I call launch campaigns these launch campaigns and I didn't pay myself. The launch campaigns are good at creating pop shots of cash. You know, you think of the way Hollywood goes and promotes a movie. It's very like, you know, a year out, they'll just drop like the title, some big beat, you know, and like a date, Woof, you know, coming next year or whatever, you know? And uh, that's the beginning of a campaign though. 
you know, and then six months out, it's like they start telling pieces of the, of the story without really closing loops. And then they go to the next character and do that another angle. And they do that, you know, think of how like successful the movie would be if you hear about it on the day it comes out, right? That would be terrible, but we will do that with our products. And so that's the role of these campaigns especially with launch campaigns. I'm gonna go choose a date and a time and I'm gonna build lots of pressure towards that. The cash that comes from that, cause like, because it, I think of it like a, almost like a sideways funnel, you know, all this pressure whoosh, just shoots through the nozzle. I don't pay myself from that cash and that's very key and that's a personal call that I made. What I do is I take that cash and I go dump it into evergreen campaigns and it's the effects of evergreen campaigns that actually pays me. Very interesting. So then what does leverage mean to you in that? A uh, team, you know, more business systems. Um, there's still only three of us doing this business and it's, it's dumb. Like people shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> the only reason we can, and I'm not bragging on that. I'm trying, I'm like getting an assist and stuff like that. <laughs> but the only reason I can is because of, I'm, I'm kind of a systems junkie. So if there's processes running stuff everywhere. That's the only reason why. <laughs> interesting. So is it a lot of automation or? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of automation. Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of unheard of to to have million dollar days. Have <laughs> I'm I'm assuming million dollar evergreen campaigns, and only have three people working for you. Does yeah, that's require, not, like don't <laughs> don't do that, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, does that require a lot of work from you? Like, how much time are you putting into that? You know, what's funny is about a year ago, I just made the call. I was like. I got three little girls. I'm married. I'm, I'm going to work from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And whatever I don't get done, I'm just going to be okay with that. So unless there's like a big event coming up, you know, I usually only work nine to six. Very interesting. What is it like? What does that look like for you? If there's three of you, what are you focusing on? So one of the biggest lessons I learned right from the beginning, I, I watched Russell go through this. Um, he, because when I got at ClickFunnels, there was only uh, 30 employees. <laughs> now there's 400. There were 14,000 monthly users, and you know now there's 100,000. So I got there at this really interesting time, right before like explosive growth. And the way I watched them hire was interesting. He was careful to only hire roles, not people. And so, like, they're not here right now. They're they're coming right now though. Um, they'll be here in about eight minutes. Um, Two, two desks to my right, um, he's my funnel builder. He isn't, but the role is, he's just serving the role. And what's nice about that is that when, when you, like before I hired him, I showed him, I was like, here's, here is the description of what you're gonna do. Um, here's the, you know, the requirements of want, what I want you to have done. Here's the requirements of what I need you to understand before you get into the role. Here's how you're gonna understand if you're being successful. I <laughs> started successful. And it was cool because like, that helps me tremendously say like you're you're fulfilling this role rather than me hiring a friend or a person because then that gets sticky you know uh the guy that sits right next to me um he does like support and events coordination um so two over is he runs my funnel team and my content team and then one over for me he runs uh the system of support and uh event setup and i'm doing the front end lead gen and revenue creation hmm so you're you're kind of you're marketing the company. Are you running the operations and stuff too, or? You know, it's funny. Uh, I learned a planning strategy from, um, we, we will be hiring that role soon, uh, like an operations manager. The reason why I haven't yet is because, you know, I built like, I built so many funnels over there, click funnels. And then what I saw people do is they build the systems too fast. Cause they like, there's a guy I was building funnels for. It was the first funnel success I ever had. And, uh, it was a guy, over on the East Coast, it's for a water company. <clears throat> and I go and I did all this research and I put all these pieces together. And I hadn't learned how to charge yet, so I was still broke. But I started having some successes with other companies I was building funnels for in the middle of college. I went and I built this guy's funnels and I launched him. And day number one, he was like, Oh my gosh, dude, this is so cool. And I was like, What's up? You know, I was like, I was so psyched because I'd gone through like 34 tries, right? Literally over five years. Uh, set first 17 of them, I didn't even know what a funnel was. And I was like, this is, yeah, what's up? Like, I told you, ain't nothing but a thing. You know, I was like so jacked about it. And it's because it's validating for me, you know? Day number two, they call me and they're like, wow, this is a lot of sales. And I'm still like on cloud nine, what's up? You know, and they're starting to freak out. And the day number three, they'll be like, turn it off. 
turn it off, turn it off, you know? And in my mind, I'd be like, I don't even know how to turn off the funnel. So <laughs> I'm like, why do you want less sales? And I'd hang up and, uh, which is, which is stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> but, uh, I shouldn't know. I ignored the CEO's phone calls for like two weeks. And, um, about two weeks later, just this scathing phone call came across. He's like, dude, turn off the funnel. And I was thinking, I don't know how to do that, but why would you want less sales? And right as I was about to hang up again, cause I was being dumb. I don't know. Don't do that. But he goes, he goes, Steven, you're going to bankrupt us. I was like, what? You're selling like crazy. That makes no sense. Are you kidding me? Who wants less sales? That's, that's psycho. And he's like, Steven, you're selling so fast. There's a physical product that I am sucking all the cash out of my business to buy and fulfill more product. I can't pay my people. You are literally selling us into bankruptcy. And it was the first time in my life that I ever realized that a funnel is 100% different than a business. And a funnel, all it is, is this revenue system. A business is like, this is the mistake that most entrepreneurs make and why I've hired so slow. They either, they either go focus just on business systems. So like, for example, like when I left my job, right, the first thing I did was built a funnel and then I was the system that supported that revenue. I, I, I was support. I was fulfillment personally. I, I, I was the only guy in the business, right? I was doing the lead. I was doing the follow-up. I wasn't all the different pieces. And so what I started doing was seeing that there's major pillar roles and systems that I need to go put in place. So I went and I, we got a, I got a support system and then found a person to run it. I didn't hire a person to do it. it. It's like such a subtle difference, but it will mean the world to anybody. So, um, yeah, that's, that, that's why that all happened that way. I'm trying to hire slowly and only roles. And the motto, if you've ever read the book rework is to only hire when it hurts. It's hurting. So we're going to try to hire it again. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. For the people listening who are still trying to get to that six figure benchmark, whether that's a year, month, day, hour, minute, what would you recommend that they focus on to get to that level? Yeah. You know, what's cool is like, there are some models on the internet now that I just know make a hundred grand. Like it's a, it is a simple six figure a year business. Um, one of them, let me get it around here. One of them is, um, Oh, I have four and a half bookshelves of books out here. <laughs> got a lot of books around. This is one of the most clever businesses ever. Uh, there's a lady, uh, her name's Bailey and she runs summits and that's all she does. And these summits, um, make six figures very easily. What people have to understand is that once you have the product, the role isn't to keep tweaking the product or even the funnel. Sometimes your role as a marketer, you only have three roles. It's, it's to build a message, it's to build the offer and it's build campaigns, not the funnel. I have actually not built a funnel of mine for over a year now. Um, cause I have systems that do that right? What I started doing is I started listing out all the things that we teach people to do just tons and tons of stuff. And then I crossed off the ones that are outsourceable that I've noticed, uh, or isn't actually marketing. And I was left with just those three things. It was a huge list messages, offers, and campaigns. A funnel isn't marketing. A funnel just collects the effects of marketing, right? So what I have to be good at. And when someone was like, Hey, I'm going to go make six figures in a day, or I'm going to make six figures over the year or whatever, that's the effect of you, how much noise you create. Uh, there's a guy, uh, his name's Harry, Harry Rickenbach. Um, he's one of the old school marketers. This is how I study this stuff, by the way. Um, the internet is a blessing, but it's also a crutch. So if you take away the internet and go study old, red, old dead rich marketers, see what they had to go do to create noise and then add the internet, they're very powerful. The other way around though, we get mistaken. We're like, oh, posting on Facebook, that's marketing. <sighs> Not really. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, so there's a guy named Harry Rickenbach and what he did was, um, this guy came to him and he said, he said, he's like, you know, 1800s or whatever. And he goes, Hey, I want to be famous. Like help me get hired into this production company. Um, I gotta go hire, I gotta go meet the producer. So I'm hired in as this actor or whatever. So the first thing Harry did is he went into a bank and he got 2000 pennies. This is back in the day when pennies were made of a material that's worth something. Right. <laughs> and he got 2000 pennies. And he just starts walking the client through downtown over to the producer's office. But the entire way, he just started dropping pennies. 
And at first, little kids just started following him, picking him up. And he, he's dropping 2,000 pennies bit by bit as they go. Pretty soon, there's this mass of people. Adults start going in there, right? Other people, and like, there's this huge crowd of people following them through the town as he's just dropping pennies like crazy. When he finally goes and knocks on the producer's door, the guy opens the door, sees the client, sees Harry, and then this sea of people <laughs> and assumes that they know each other and they didn't. He just created the perception with this huge amount of pennies or whatever. And, uh, and but that, that's like what I'm saying though, is like people don't know how to go cause noise. So one of my favorite, one of the, one of the easy ways people go do it is they'll go, and they do a post on Facebook, which is great. Then they do like an email blast, which is great. Then they go do a, uh, you know, something, a many chat, which is great. But that's it, right? Like you need a storyline. You need multi, it's a multi-series set of events, right? So if a very simple way to create a campaign is just to have multiple emails that all tie together, do it on multiple platforms that are all setting towards a certain date and time. All right, it's not open yet, but it's about to be. It's not open yet, but it's about to be. It's not open yet, right? And you're selling, you're telling a story throughout it. That's a very simple way to use today's distribution. Um, uh, one of my favorite campaigns that we did for for this. Um, this is actually how I filled my event. So I got 600 people, or one of the methods that filled it up. I knew that I saw that Russell was was doing this this book, right? Where he goes in and asks all these people. One of the things you'll notice inside of this book is that people start focusing on the campaign that they've used to get off the feet instead of just the product. And so that's why I challenge anyone to go look at. And what I decided to go do was figure out a campaign that we could set on the back of this book. So I created something called OFA Sign Up. And all I did is inside of a hotel room is I had this book and for three hours I built a single page. And the page was, um, Here's what you're gonna get from Russell. And I just took his offer from One Funnel Way. Here's what you're gonna get, you know, which included this book. Here's what you're gonna get from me. I added bonuses on top of it, and then I put a countdown timer to to the day that you could sign up and not sign up, and then uh, or to the day when you couldn't sign up anymore. And then I just did a video, which was literally the perfect webinar script in five minutes, super shrunk down, and uh, that stupid little three hour build page. That thing's made 175 grand pretty much on autopilot in the last like year. And, and the reason is because it just in affiliate commissions. And the reason is because um, of the campaign behind it. What I started doing, right? Cause like how many, how many done funnels are there that no one has heard about? It's like a ton of them, you know? So like what I need to get good at is causing the noise in front of the funnel that puts attention to the funnel itself. Mm. So I started doing podcast interviews and I started making pieces of content all over the place. And I started, we started driving paid ads. Most people run the paid ads, which is an evergreen campaign and that's okay. But if you don't have cash, that's, you know, it's, it gets hard. Um, and so there's, there's like a list of launch campaigns and a list of evergreen campaigns. And all I have my people do is we just cherry pick the one that most likely fits theirs. Cool. And now I'm just going to focus on launch campaigns and then they start prepping the groundwork for evergreen campaign and uh yeah that, that's how the whole game happens so i know it's all kind of all over the place but you got to focus on the noise gen yeah no it makes sense and it, the concept really works for i mean growing a social channel like if you if you're looking for viewers on youtube if you're looking for followers on twitter like it yeah. is kind of the same concept in yeah. my eyes in my mind totally um, is yeah so real quick last question before we get into the the rapid fire questions it, the whole time you were, you were speaking about creating launch campaigns, evergreen campaigns, and you're talking about creating the storyline to put in front of the whatever funnel or offer you're, you're creating is the, so what is, what does the evergreen look like? Is that just like a continuous ongoing campaign of advertisements? And then the launch is like, this is the day that you can sign up or how, how does that work technically? Yeah, so for the launch campaign, I'm kind of trying to push a specific date and time and call to action. So it's, those are like the huge qualifiers. Um, <clears throat> funny enough, in that in that fake Fiji mermaid, they literally sewed a monkey onto a fish, <laughs> and uh, that was the mermaid. Uh, he, he was uh, you can actually see in his ad he was pushing a specific day and time, and it, but it's only available for a week after that. I mean, he understood this stuff. Um, 
and that that's kind of it. So with the launch campaign, I'm trying to push a specific day and time. With evergreen stuff though, for example, um, some of the evergreen campaigns that I run, ads, paid ads are definitely one. And it's kind of an easy, easy one that everyone should go for. <clears throat> I don't know how to run them, by the way, either. I, these, each of these campaign styles, I say, I, I, there's a, I hire somebody or an agency to go run them. That's the other reason why there's only three of us. Um, so, because I don't want to learn how to do it. And I don't want my guys to go learn how to do it. <laughs> you know, uh, someone else already knows how. So, um, so what I'm going to go do, though, is I'm going to run Facebook ads. Um, actually, funny enough, podcasting for me is an evergreen campaign. I will usually do a sideways webinar. I'm stripping out parts of a webinar. Um, getting on these, actually right here, Tuesday mornings for me, that is actually an evergreen campaign strategy I started doing about a year and a half ago. And uh, now I've been on hundreds of podcasts. You know, that, that does a lot for the brand. I, I recommend everybody to go get, right, interviewsteve.com is where people sign up for that. And we actually have to take it down here soon for other reasons. <laughs> But like, it's been nuts how effective it's been. Like I would go get interviewcameron.com, tell your audience about it, and then dang, man, it's like spreading seeds everywhere. Content doesn't die, it has babies, right? It goes all over the place. Um, anyway, th those are examples of, those are things that last forever, only having done them once. Um, uh, some like launch campaign strat strategies for me are things like, um, um, go look up something called like um, uh, seven day launch. Uh, 70 launch, I believe from Stu McLaren that got 150 people to my event. Uh, we made a lot of money with that, that one campaign. It was so good. We ended up running it a second time and everyone forgot we had, <laughs> um, seven day launch. That was a big one. Summits. Summits are huge. I'm about to do a summit as well. Um, they're one time events, which can be evergreen, but they're one time major events. You build a lot of pressure around anyway. Love it. Love it, man. No, that's, that's huge, huge value for people listening. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Before we hop off here, I just, I want to ask you a couple questions to get to know you personally a little bit better. Yeah. The first one is you said you had four bookshelves around your office there. <laughs> what has been your favorite read of the year so far? Um, I'm really into actually, <clears throat> here we go. I actually just started this one, but uh, what I've learned, I was sitting in an inner circle meeting and I realized that that's when I realized that like most two comic club award winners are not are broke because they don't know what to do the money afterwards. So they just blow it. Um, so I hire a lot of finance people to help me figure out what to do with it and how to make it bigger. And uh, this is like the equivalent of their industry's expert secrets. And so this book is um, the ultimate blueprint for an insanely successful business teaches how to build the business around that revenue. So that's been cool. Oh, I love that. I'm going to have to go grab that today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And on what do you like to spend your time and money outside of business? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a thrill seeker. Uh, I play the drums and the piano and I sang in a band growing up. And um, I like to go be outside and shoot. And <laughs> it's a lot of random stuff, man. But whatever it is, I, I like guns. I shoot a lot and um, or a bit. <laughs> and I don't know, music, I spent a lot of money on music and movies. Yeah. Love it, man. I just got my first uh, conceal pistol the other day. Sweet. Nice. All right, cool. Got a Breda APX. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. About to go get a, a, a Benelli uh, Nova in a couple cool. weeks. Yeah. Love guns too, man. Benelli 12 gauge. <laughs> yeah, pump. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, man. What are some softwares in your business that you couldn't live without? I had my finance guy asked me this. He's like, dude, imagine how many people you would have to have. We're talking floors of people. If you didn't have click funnels on Facebook, <laughs> like, yeah, it would be ridiculous. The amount of leverage that you get with those two tools is insane. <laughs> Blows my mind when people don't have them. Um, that as well as um, I use right now, Zoho is our CRM. Um, I love, um, I actually, not that I'd die without it, but I'm starting to find a lot of people, some really effective ways to use things like Sly Broadcast, dropping voicemails on people's phones. Um, a software that's a service, Design Pickle, holy crap. Super helpful, really, really enjoyed them lately. Sweet, so I'm gonna go check them out for sure. Last question for you. Is there any other words of wisdom you would give the people listening? 
Yeah, I'll tell you, and I know you've probably heard it before, but that first six figures is it's hard and it should be celebrated. <clears throat> we celebrate the million dollars, but six figures is, in my mind, a larger deal than the million. Once you hit six figures, it's just a matter of a few more systems and gaining some more distribution, you know, more campaigns. Like that's it. That first hundred grand though, super, super. I love that. That's like the theme of this. Um, you have to understand is that like, I, I don't, I don't believe in failure. It's kind of a weird belief I've got maybe, but I went to 34 tries, 34 before I had a funnel really take off. And it was one of the most grueling, I mean, it's rough. I'm not going to lie or try and sugarcoat or make it less than it was. It sucked. And it sucked because I had this dream and, you know, understandably after a while, friends and family started asking things like, is this the one, you know, and you're like, yeah, it's the one you're like, you're like I have no idea, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, you know, of course, what are you talking about? You know? And, um, is this the one or go get a job, you know, or things like that. And you're like, uh, I'm not going to go do that. Um, and so, but I got to find ways to like, pay for the family, you know, it, it, it provide and such. So I joined the army, right? And I went into tons of stuff in there and it, it was, anyway, there was all these pieces that were just sitting in my back, right? Sitting on, I'm sitting on the back of my mind, just reminding me what I wasn't. Um, these things like, uh, things like, you know, you've been told by counselors in the past, Stephen, you might have ADHD. You're like, oh crap, and it becomes a whip, right? I'm not worthy for my goal anymore. We all do that. Oh, dang it. I can't speak in front of people like Stephen can. Man, I was so shy. I would walk the other way when I'd see an adult in high school, right? I would not be doing what I am now. Um, and we, we understand is like the reason I know how to talk is because I couldn't. The reason I know how to make money quite well now is because I did not know how to for a long time. And when people like sit back and re recognize that and realize it, they, there's a coin I keep on my desk that reminds me of the whole principle. It's the obstacle is the way. All right. Obstacles the way. And on the back, it says the impediment of action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. And you realize <clears throat> the failure is not real. It's a completely made up concept. All things are progression. So, oh, I failed at that. Not really. <laughs> I, uh, we wouldn't have done th the 35th try if I had done the, hadn't done the 34th. You know, and when you start sitting back and realizing that, it's like, crap, I am more followable because I'm vulnerable about how much crap I went through. Oh, Steven, you're a real guy, right? I hear that a lot. And so when people don't worry about being a professional or something else that that's the beauty of the internet. When you work for somebody else, you have to be their interpretation of what success is. When you work on the internet, when you work for yourself, you can be the full version of you. You can be you louder. And that's the beauty of the whole thing. And then you're like, man, failure is not real. And you just move forward and create um, cool things and tell stories. Love it, man. Thank you for sharing that. I love your concept of life and failure and i wish you the best man i appreciate your time and your wisdom you provide on the show today it was is fun man appreciate it. you're great <laughs> thank you thank you is there any place you want to send people to join your community learn more about you get involved in what you got going on yeah honestly stevejlarson.com it's kind of a hub for everything perfect guys i will put all that stuff in the show notes you'll see it on the episode link here Thank you again, Steve, for, for everything. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys.